So this is the second video of our series and we have already installed R. If you haven't, you probably would like to check out the first video. Um, this time we want to install R Studio, which is an integrated development environment, so it makes it easy and more convenient to work with R. Um, because as you probably have seen before, we can directly work with R and type everything into the console, but R only really makes sense if you uh, run scripts with it. So if you have kind of a computer program that you write in the language R and then let the computer execute. And also it's more convenient to have an overview about your current working environment, meaning the variables that you have loaded and probably also about your files uh, which are connected to an R project that you are doing. So that's why R Studio makes absolutely sense. And there are other uh, environments which you could use. For example, I used for a long time TinR. Some hardcore freaks use Emacs as a working environment. But yeah, R Studio has become kind of a standard working environment. It really, it pretty works well. To install that on your computer, and again, I will. I personally have a Linux system here. I just show you how to do that in a Windows system. Uh, with a Mac, it should be more or less the same. You have to go to, um, probably the easiest way is to go to a search engine of your choice and type in R Studio. And I have already, I was already on the web page, so I get here uh, auto uh, completion. But if I just search for our studio, I'm pretty sure that this web page should come up first. So www.rstudio.com, where you can download our studio. And we go directly to this web page now. And it's a bit overwhelming, probably in the first place, but you can see here, download our studio. Um, that's what we want to do. So I click that link. And now, talking about overwhelming probably, there are several options how you can download our studio with com that comes with different costs up to 30,000 US dollar. But we only need the R Studio desktop open source license. Um, you can see that most of the other things are related to either prior, uh, priority support or access via web browser, which is the case for an R Studio server installing and other things. We only need this desktop version here. So I click on download and now you can here see the different installers for the supported platforms, Windows, Mac, several Linux versions, and if you are using Linux, it might also be the most convenient way to use the package manager of your distribution to install RStudio. If not, if you still stick to Windows or Mac OS, you might use one of those here and take the installer, probably not take the uh, zip or tarballs, just take the installer here and click on that link and you get a download dialog. I want to save the file. It's not too big and my computer here sometimes is a bit slow because it's running in a virtual machine, but he has finished downloading it. And here is the uh, executed file, which I click. And I get a security warning. Yes, I want to have this run. And now again, an install dialog is coming up and I have excused myself that this is in German. I selected actually English as, as language here, but uh, I'm probably not deep enough in the Windows system here. So with the installation, I just go forward. I can select where our studio should be installed. And it's kind of a hefty installation here with 500 megabytes. 
Um, but current computers should be very much capable of, of handling that. So I leave the folder like this. Probably you have some preferences where your programs should be stored. I currently leave it here. And I can name the start menu folder where RStudio should be installed. Naming that RStudio kind of makes sense, so I leave it like it is. Install. And here we go. Now again, that's a lengthy installation process and I very probably will cut that out later on in the video editing. So, installation is finished and we can click on complete, finish and now if we look to our program list here we should see somewhere here it is R Studio. So nice. It has installed and we can click on that to start it up. That might take a bit of a time. But yeah that's fine. I enlarge that. And now we have R Studio. And when you remember last time when we started up R itself, this here is the same thing. So here we have now R. Um, and I can again calculate difficult calculations just in the command line. But to work with R Studio, uh, to work with R in a more productive way, it makes sense to use other uh, methods just uh, beside just typing directly into the console. And I will just give you a very short overview about the components here. So down below here you have the console and also a terminal, which I will now not use here. So here you can directly type in the command line of your operation system in the console you directly communicate with R. So down here everything that actively is executed takes place. Up here we have um, the editor. So within that I can type the same calculation as before. And when I press enter nothing happens because this is really a text editor where you just put your program script or your calculations in and you have to explicitly run them if you want to them to be executed. I just changed the numbers here. So we have a different output. To run them I can go with the cursor into the line where I want to run something, what I want to have been executed and click on the run button. And like you can now probably already read you could also press Control and Enter as a keyboard shortcut and you probably tend to use that more often soon. So if I just click Run here, you can see down below here, this is pasted into the console and we also get the calculation out here down below. So here you write your program, your R script, down here it is executed, over here you, we have the environment, so there is later on a list of every variable we have set. We also have here a history with all the things that we have executed before, and you can see I work with R Studio also in Windows before. And we have also here connections, we will not talk about that now, and there might also other things popping up here soon. And down below you have something with which you can interact mostly with your operating system, for example with the files. You can see here a list of files like in a usual file browser. What is still empty here is the plots, so whatever you plot will pop up here. Um, there is some help, and that's probably a downside of R. Um, the help is rather limited. So you have to know what you are looking for, otherwise you will not find 
help you. You can not just type in the kind of analysis you want to do and expect R to give you a result. You explicitly have to know the name of the uh, command, what you want help, help with. And there's also a viewer. I will not talk about that. The only thing I will talk a bit more might be packages, but we keep that up also for another um, another video. Not in this now. So editor here, um, console here, our environment and things that we did in the past with in R and here is kind of a multi-purpose window with which you can interact, for example, with the operating system and your file system. And there are several other things up here in the menu. We now will not go into that in more detail. We, I will just want to show you how you quit our studio. Of course, either here with the X on the upper right, or you go to File and say Quit Session. And that's what we are now doing. And if I would have changed something in the working environment, I would also have been asked if I want to save the workspace now, which is similar to R. So whatever I can, whenever I save the workspace, when I reload our studio, I get the same environment that I had before. That's it for our studio for now. In the next video, I might like to show you some basic operations with our studio.